This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So having looked at the world of our financial assets, we're now going to switch our attention. So the reverse of the coin, uh, going through there and looking at financial liabilities. So what we have here with financial liabilities is the main focus really uh, at this level particularly is going through there and looking at when we issue debt. Because when we issue debt, we're going to debit the bank and credit our financial liability. So once again, we'll need to look at what happens initially, uh, what happens subsequently, and then what happens when it is derecognized. So initially, when we make that entry to the debit of the bank and the credit to the financial liability, uh, we go through that. Usual rules apply with regards to looking at the fair value. Uh, so looking effectively at what you receive with regards to the cash. Just be careful. We then deduct the transaction costs. OK, uh, so what we're effectively looking at here is that we record the financial liability at your net proceeds because you receive money coming in from the issue of the debt. But at the same time, you then pay money going out on those transaction costs. So those broker fees. Uh, once you've recognised your financial liability at your net proceeds, we then go through there and have a choice with regard to the subsequent measurements. We can either go through there and use amortised cost, which effectively is your default treatment here for financial liabilities, unless, however, there it is held for some trading purposes. So you have some form of fancy financial liability that you're looking to trade. So therefore, it will be held at fair value through profit or loss. So revaluing again every year to fair value with gains and losses going through profit or loss. Don't worry about that. That's something for the days of strategic business reporting. We're focusing on financial reporting and what we want to look at is the measurement through amortised costs, which given that you've looked at it for your financial assets, hopefully you're more comfortable with that now. The way we look at it for the financial liabilities is in exactly the same fashion. All we do is that the debits and credits are reversed. OK, we'll see that shortly in an example. Uh, then once we de-recognise it, uh, we de-recognise it clearly when it has finally been paid in full or we have transferred it to another party. So somebody else therefore has that obligation. OK, so not a huge amount to go through there and add. I think the key bits are initially it is at net proceeds and then we go through there and measure it subsequently at your amortised cost. So let's go through there and have a look at the example uh, of your financial liabilities. Uh, it says here, calculate the amount to be shown in the statement of financial position. Statement of profit or loss. Uh, for each of the four years of the debenture. OK, so what we're going to have there, similarly to, to what we saw earlier on our financial assets, we're going to look at the statement of financial position, the statement of profit or loss for year one, year two, year three, and year four. OK. Uh, the statement of financial position. You are looking at your debentures. On the statement of profit or loss, it's no longer interest received. It is there. Your finance cost, isn't it? Your interest payable, if you so wish. OK. Because we are borrowing money and that borrowing of the money it involves an expense, doesn't it? The payment of interest. So what we've got here, uh, again, we will require a working. The working will look exactly the same as what we had before for our financial assets. Uh, so it says here, uh, Norma issues. So that, that's the key bit there. We're not buying, we are issuing. So if we are issuing 
we have a financial liability, okay, because we receive the cash and we therefore then have the obligation to pay that back, okay. Uh, so you've got the 20,000 redeemable debentures, uh, they have a $100 par value, and then you have issue costs, is it of 100,000, okay. So when we're going through that and looking at our net proceeds, for our initial measurements. Uh, what we have there is that we receive $100 for each of the 20,000 debentures issued. So is that 200,000, no, 2 million, careful, uh, $2 million. And then we deduct. the issue costs okay so that is what we receive and then that is what we have paid isn't it initially so when we're looking at our initial recognition is that the as 1.9 million again if you're a fan of your debits and credits and don't lie to me you are i know uh, what we're going to go through and do that is that we will debit the bank and credit your financial liability. Okay. Excellent. So we'll put that in as the starting point in our table in a moment. But let's just look at the rest of the example. Uh, it's redeemable. Is it there at a 5% premium? So... 1.05 times by the 2 million. Uh, does that go through the and give me 2.1 million? So that's what we will pay back in four years' time. Okay. Uh, there is also a coupon rate of 2%. So remember, we apply that coupon rate, don't we, to the par value. So that's 2% multiplied by 100 multiplied by the 20,000. Does that go through there? If my maths is right, does it give me there $40,000? Okay. Uh, and then the effective rate of interest. So what we're going to grow this debenture at uh, is there at the 4.5. Eight. Okay. Excellent. There we go. Uh, so that's what we need to fill in in terms of the financial statements. Uh, we've got a page then. Is it for our workings? So again, it's a, it's a columnar approach. Is it five columns that we need to look at? So we start off by looking at the year. One, two three and four and we then start off is it there with the brought forward uh, you then have your finance costs that you will apply to the outstanding debt so is that at the 4.58 percent you then got your coupon rate of interest which was at two percent and then your carry forward figure. So the finance cost appears in the statement of profit or loss. The carry forward is there in the statement of financial position. Again, to keep it simple, I'm just going to work in round thousands. So I start off there, is it with the 1,900, okay? Because what should happen is that ultimately, at the end of the fourth year, it should come down to nil. Okay. Uh, because what we're going to try and go through and do is we're going to take that initial liability of 1,900, grow it over its life uh, to go through there, and then look at the total repayments. So what we've got here 
is initially we receive is it the 1.9 million what we then go through and pay back over the four years uh, should be the as the coupon interest so is that 40,000 multiplied by your four years so is that 160,000 and then you have the principal as well so on redemption it's the 2.1 million so what you overall pay is that two million two hundred and sixty thousand so you've got three hundred is it there and sixty thousand that three hundred and sixty thousand is your interest isn't it your finance cost that finance cost needs to be spread over the life of the instrument so we will be debiting my finance cost and crediting my financial liability again how we're going to go through and spread that is we will be basing that is it at the effective rate which is uh, at 4.58%. Again, that figure will be given to you within the calculations. If you're brave or crazy enough and wish to calculate it, it's just the IRR of the cash flows. I say just, okay, there we go. So let's populate the table. Let's see how we get on. Uh, so 0 0.0458 times by 1,900. Uh, does that give me 87? I pay 40. And does that then give me 1947? Okay. Uh, so 87 finance cost, 1947 year end liability. Uh, in the second year, what have we got? Well, the carry forward becomes. The brought forward, does that then give me 89? I then pay the 40 as the annual coupon interest, which gives me, is it 1996 as my carry forward? Again, it's the same process, brought forward, add the finance cost, deduct the coupon, Gives you the carry forward figure. So I'm brought forward is 1996. Before I forget, let's just go through and put the figures in the financial statements. So is it 89 and 1996? Uh, 1996. 4.58% of that, does that give me 91? I make the payment of 40. To give me there, is it 2047? Uh, so again, we can put the figures in the financial statements, 91 and 2047. And then finally, what should happen in year four is that the debentures should come down to nil and zero. Uh, and then we have a finance cost as well. So we've got 2047. Does that give me 94? In the final year, I pay 2140. Don't forget that. What you've got is that the 40,000 plus the 2.1 million. Remember that the, the, the initial amount that we received 
ones there. Two million is redeemed at a five percent premium, isn't it? Uh, so two oh four seven plus the ninety four less the two one four oh. Oh, it gives me one. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much nil, isn't it? Any differences that you get are due to rounding. So what we've got there is the final year's finance cost is 94. Uh, again, what you can see is that we are applying the matching concept. So the higher the outstanding debts, the higher the overall finance cost. And then if you go through and total up the finance cost itself, 87 plus 89 plus 91 plus 94 gives you 360. It says 361, but I'm not too fussed about that there. Okay. And that 360 is the finance cost that we have spread over the life of the debt using this effective rate of interest okay so remember what we're doing there is that we are accounting for the substance of this transaction okay because what we've got there is that this is the amount that we then receive and then what happens is that we pay the amounts over the life of the debt uh, and then charge the interest okay to bring it all back down to zero so if you were to total up those payments uh, that will give you is it the two two six zero okay uh, which is what we have paid there again if you're interested in the journal entries uh, we've done the initial one originally haven't we so we did that right at the start debit bank credit the financial liability with the, the 1.9 million what we can go through and do now is look at how we record the finance cost. And how we record the payments. Okay. So what we've got that, if I can find my blank page, there it is. Uh, we're going to go through and just look at year one. Because once you've done it for one year, you can do it for every year. So my finance cost is I will debit my finance cost in the statement of profit or loss. Is it there with 87 and credit my financial liability with 87. So remember the finance cost. Is the statement of profit or loss and the financial liability is on the SFP. Uh, so that's my finance cost. What about my coupon interest? So we pay the coupon interest. So you credit the bank, <coughs> pardon me, with the 40. And then what you will do is you will debit the financial liability with the 40 so that debit to the liability reduces the outstanding amount that we are due to pay by the coupon rate of interest that we are paying each year okay there we go so that goes through there and puts it in in terms of a debit and a credit perspective as to why we then add the finance cost and deduct the coupon rate of interest. There you have it. So that's how to go through and treat a standard financial liability at amortised cost. It's not easy, but it's very uh, repetitive. Uh, the only thing that's going to change are the numbers. The process uh, of using that table is going to stay the same all the time, whether it's a financial asset or whether it's a financial liability, as we have here. Yeah. Okay. So keep practicing those questions, get into the study text and have a go at some of the questions that may be there. And I'll see you shortly to go through there and finish it off when we start looking at our compound financial instruments and convertible debentures.